No, it's all right. Good morning, everybody. Is it well with you? Can I see? Why are you sitting down? You're tired? Is the Bible too heavy for you? Stand then. We're going to pray. Can I see it? Wave it. Hold it high. A big empty patch over that side there. See where that back there look? Big empty. Oh, okay. You have it? Do you know how to use it? How do you use it? What's written? Great is he that's... No weapon formed or... You got it? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We stand before you with hearts of humility. We recognize that without you, Father God, we are nothing and can do nothing. Therefore, we ask that you'll anoint me tonight, today, for your glory. And we pray that I will decrease and you will increase. We pray the hearts of every person will be open to your word. We pray, Father God, not for hearers only, but for doers of your word. Today, we seal this place with the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, no disruptions, no disorder. Whatever the enemy had planned, we pull it down in the name of Jesus. And we bind, say we bind every principality, every power, every spiritual wickedness. And as the rulers of darkness in high places, we bind you today in the name of Jesus. We draw a bloodline around this place. We send forth the sword of the spirit to war against every unclean spirit that will try to come near this building in Jesus' name. And everybody say, amen. amen. Before you sit, can I ask you something? Do you, have, do you remember a thing called get well cards? Yes. You ever heard of that? Yes. Get well cards, you know what that is? Yes. You've heard of it, you know it? Yes. Have you ever heard of a pen? Yes. You, you got a pen? Yes. Can you use a pen? Yes. Okay. I'm baffled. Did you hear the message Sarah taught the other day on honor? Yes. This is a simple question. It doesn't, you don't need a degree to, to remember that. Do you remember a message called honor? Yes. I'm surprised. This is not, don't do anything now because it wouldn't look right. Because do it for the next pastor's wife you meet. Because when someone who gives their life to, to you, to grow you, and you do not even have the heart of compassion to write a card and say, we're praying for you. It says a lot about your heart. I'm trying to help you. Does that help you? Does that make you feel bad? Just say, ouch. I just say, ouch. In the old days, what we'd do when someone's not well, when any, anyone in this church goes, any, anyone sick or anything, the first thing she does is she gets to pray and phone in and check in and always, we're always on it for you. But where is your honor? When your wife, the woman who fights for your life, she's sick, not sick, she's had an operation and we don't even have it in our hearts because from the abundance of the heart, it's what's in you that's coming out right now, which really means you really have no care or concern for her or her well-being. No, don't tell me you do. Action speaks louder than... Okay? Well, you can be seated now. Carry that with you. Amen? I can only know... I only know one way. In my life, there's no gray area. It's the Word and it's God. And the truth... How many know the Bible says the truth shall bind you? What does it say? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You've just been set free. You'll think twice now. You'll never forget that. So today, I want to share some things with you. Um, I, I want to let you know this. We never preach to hurt you. We never preach at anybody. Most of the times you come up here, these preachers will tell you many times you come up on a platform, and what you plan to preach goes totally different direction. You have to be led by the Spirit of God. In fact, my message today is called The Dangers, The Danger of Open Doors. See, I, I phoned someone, I think, last week. I told, I said, Alicia, I'm going to preach on open doors this week. And then I keep hearing it all week. I heard on the prayer meeting on midnight, I heard Fifi talking about open doors. And I believe that this is the word for us today. 
Now, how, would you, how many would like to know if there's a door open in your life that brought danger to you, you'll be grateful for someone to tell you how to close the door? How many if there's a door open in your life and you don't, you're not aware of it? For instance, here's one. The Bible says you should not let the sun go down on your wrath. Do you understand that? Well, what, what does that mean? Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. What happens if you let the sun go down on your wrath? You give the devil access into your life. Whilst you're arguing, whilst you're arguing the devil's busy destroying. So when he says, don't let the sun go down in wrath, and you go to bed with your anger, with your sulking, with your unforgiveness, how many know while you're sleeping, he's busy in your life bringing, it, bringing destruction? Now, how many times have you heard us say that? Couples, how many went to bed last night in peace? Can I see a hand? Not every hand's raised. How many, how many not just, this is not just couples, this is singles too. Married doesn't make, when you're married, you have to let, you can, you, you got to not let the sun go down your wrath, but when you're single, it's okay. It's the same for all of us. How I many single people experience turmoil and trials and anger and circumstances as well? So wherever you, wherever you are, you should not let the sun go down on your wrath. What stops us from closing the door? Something called pride, selfishness, ego, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness. When we allow these things into our lives, there's people right now, there's families right now, your marriage could change just like that if you change your, your, your uh, perspective just by one single shift of your, of your thought life, your thinking, and humbled yourself and you'll see the change. Do you, you get what I'm saying? So if you want to do this, you've got to learn to close the doors. Now, I'm going to go some, through things, some things today that will challenge you. If you turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, and I think a lot of people don't understand the spiritual laws that govern the kingdom we're in. In Luke chapter 11, he says this. From verse 24, he says, hold on, I'm in 10, bear me one minute. Verse 24 says, and when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. How many of you know many of us had demons before we got saved? What was your addiction before you got saved? Was it you could not stop doing before you got saved? Hmm? I says many of us had demons before we got saved. I know I swore, like I swore, like from three years old, and I practiced swearing. From the day I said, Jesus, come into my heart, I've repented my sins, forgive me, I have never ever one time swore again. That was not me. That was more, that was a demonic spirit that gained entrance into my life. Now, there are different demonic spirits that are looking for entrance into our lives. In Genesis chapter three, we see where Adam and Eve was tempted, where Eve was tempted because the devil needed access into the world. To use, to be in this world, he needs access into people's lives. And the things that he'll bring into your life, if you do it long enough or you engage with it, you become demon possessed. The first demon I ever cast out of a woman is an English woman, and she was only about five foot four, but she was once a born again Christian, and she decided she didn't want God and she didn't want the devil. How many of you know there's no gray area? Jesus said that no man can serve is one or the other. So if you're, you're either with God or you're with the devil, there's no gray area, not by yourself. <clears throat> it took me a few hours casting this devil out of this woman. There's so many of them in her. And after that, I, outside the window, when I'm casting them out, I heard a voice saying, Pearl, don't listen to him. Pearl, don't listen to him. 
We got her free. By the time we left, went to church, came back, she had already, someone left a bottle of vodka on her doorstep. She drank the vodka and she's worse than what she was before. We could no longer cast devils out of her because watch what it says. Now, how many would say devils have gone out of your life? How many say you have no devils in you today? If they're not raising their hand, change seats on the other side. <laughs> so, I mean, oh my God. Oh, you, you, you okay to think you have devils in you? Watch what he says. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking a place to rest. Finding none, he says, I know what I'll do. I'm going to return to my house from whence I came out. When he comes and he sees it, and he sees, he finds it swept and garnished. What is this talking about? How does your house get swept and garnished as a human being? Hmm? You must be born again. That's the only time a human being can be swept and garnished. He sees you, the house being swept and garnished. Then he goes and takes to himself. When he comes, he sees it swept and garnished. Then he goes, takes to himself seven other spirits more worse than himself, and they enter in and dwell therein, and the last state of that man is seven times worse than it was before. What does that mean when you play with sin? I mean, sin opens doors. Sin is, what, what is sin? Watching pornography. How I many, if you watch enough pornography, you can end up being demon possessed? Because when you're watching it, you're saying, I agree with it. You've got to be very careful what you watch, what you listen to. You know, have you ever been to soothsayers, uh, palm readers, Christians? You, if, what would you do if I could tell you your future tomorrow, that you're going to die at 12 o'clock? How would that change your life? What you'll do, you'll stress all night, you won't sleep all night, you'll be stressing and doing everything. So just rest in God that he orders your steps. And recognize if God is for you and you're doing everything right, God will bless you. God will protect you. God will keep you. Are you listening to me? Ecclesiastes, and let me say when we talk about sin, look at Ecclesiastes 8. And this is the problem where, do you know, there's a, do you know what the fear of the Lord is? Huh? Do you know what the fear of the Lord is? A lot of people don't know or understand the fear of the Lord. It's not, it's not afraid of God. It's a reverential fear of God. That you, you, when, you, when we went to church, we would be checking our hearts. Because when you read the book of Acts chapter 5, you see what Ananias and Sapphira died in the service because they lied. They lied to the Holy Spirit. Now, we can walk into church. We, some of you were in bed with other people last night. It don't bother you. You just come in, and because there's no lightning bolt to strike you down, you think it's okay. And watch what he says here in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 8. He said, verse 11 says, Because sentence against evil work is not executed immediately, Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Who are you serving today? Is it God 100%? Is it 50%? You all are very quiet today. I'm talking about this. How many know sin will open doors in your life? Sin when you go out and you sin, and after a while, how many know the first time you sin, you feel guilty? After a while, you could, you, it's, the guilt is not there like that anymore. After a while, you can continue sinning without feeling anything. Do you know what that is? It's called, where, where's these guys gone? Are they in the church? Are you in the church? Thank you. Are they in the church? Are you in the church? No, no, stay there. I just need to know you're in the church. Because we don't want entertainers on the platform. We want musicians anointed. Is everyone in the church? Okay. So everyone's here? 
I don't, I've never sat back at church. I always come to the front of the church. All the nonsense happens at the back of the church. All the talkers and the, the, the jibby, 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 jibby people sit. I'm, you, if you're at the back, you're at the back. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I like to be at the front. I'm just watching what I'm saying. So when you sin and you continue to sin, what happens to you and you don't realize it is your conscience becomes seared. Do you know what a seared conscience is? It's where you could do things and there's no conviction anymore. If you keep sinning and you could get to the place where you can no longer obtain repentance, it's a dangerous place to be. So when we, when we look at this, because God doesn't deal with us immediately, we think it's okay. And we keep doing what we're doing. We come to church and we get a little conviction sometime, but after a while, the word doesn't even touch you anymore. The heart becomes hard, and you're convinced now you're doing okay. God has seen it. God has allowed it, and you're okay. But judgment will come one day. Are you here? So I'm trying to help you today. <clears throat> That's a door you must close. You cannot walk around and do what you want. How I many of we bought the price? We belong to God. We don't watch anything and everything on TV. How I many you know, even on TV, some of the music that is, comes out of the TV, even backing tracks for the other day, I was watching a Western, which a Western is clean. That even when they shoot each other, there's no blood. It's just, ugh, and you drop to the ground. It's, it's, it's clean. And I'm sitting there, and Ashley says to me, Granddad, I thought you didn't listen to weird music. And I'm like, what music? I'm like, this is a Western. He says, that is a such and such a song from such and such a group. I'd never heard of the group. I never heard of the song. But it's the backing music. One preacher went to Africa. And he, you know, they, they were doing missions. And the, the, the pastor said, the pastor was, they had their room and the child was playing music. And the chief went to him and said, we thought you're Christians. And he said, we are Christians. He says, the music coming from your house is what witch doctors use to summon demons. It's a, a backing track they use. So music, you must be very careful with music because who was the chief of music in heaven? Huh? So he was the worship leader in heaven, so he knows music. Hence why you get so many music artists that sign a covenant with them for his life, for, for their life to get fame. If you go and Google it, you see how many of them died at age 27 because Amy Winehouse and many others, they died at age 27 because they made a covenant with the devil for, for fame, for money, but they died at 27. How many of you would rather live poor and live long than be famous and die young? And you don't understand it. A lot of the music coming out now, it used to be hidden back in the day. We used to call it back, uh, back masking. They used to put it into the songs, and when the song, when you've done drugs, and you, this, you can hear what they're saying, worshiping the devil. Today, they don't hide it. Years ago, when someone sung a song, we understood what they said. But there's a time where it changed, where now they're singing, you're like, what on earth is that? What are they saying? Because they're doing all kinds of stuff, and they don't, there's one, Hotel California, remember that? Welcome to the Hotel California. Do you remember that song? If you listen to it, it's, it's talking about going to hell. You check in, but you can't check back out. Those, those are the kind of songs. So you got to, I mean, you know the song if you sing it now. Don't sing it now in this church. But the, the, that's a song that was demonic. So when you sing Hotel California, listen to it. Welcome to Hotel California. I, but I don't know the words. I don't want to know the words. But it's saying when you check in, you can't check back out. There's only one place you can check in and can't check back out. The songs that send me to hell, I want to go to hell. Why would you listen to things like that? The movies you watch, almost even now, you've got to be so careful with children's cartoons. Children's cartoons, it has, it has witchcraft and Satan is in it. When we, we used to watch something called Bewitched, it was all it was fun. The way they do it, it looks fun. She blinks her eyes and something happens. She wiggles her nose and says, well, that's witchcraft. I says witchcraft. You've got to be careful what you let into your life. The, the television is the, is the devil's evangelist. Youth, we, we haven't seen the fruit yet of the mobile phone. We haven't seen it. It's still in the process of growing, but it's beginning to bear fruit. And what you're going to see is a lot of people who are demon-possessed. Because when you have that thing in your hand, most people can't put it down. 
it's become, and they're working on a new one that's even more addictive than this one. And when you get it, when you're in there by yourself, when you're lonely, I mean, that little thing, years ago, this room couldn't take the computers to do what that phone does. And when you're on that phone and you're scrolling, you know, you get on there and mystic teachings, uh, all these different teachings they have, get into occultism. If you're not careful, you're going to end up where you get these things come into your house. And let me tell you, the first time I cast him out of a woman, the devil says, when my music plays, and this is where I learned this, says, when my music plays in homes, it gives me, listen, it gives me the authority to destroy homes. While you've got your ragga ragga muffin and all the different stuff going on in your house and all your bass beating up in your house, this devil's coming into your door and bringing destruction, poverty, lack and death, mental, mental problems, all kind of stuff into your life. Are you hearing me today? So you've got to make sure you close these doors. Husbands and wives, if you are going to continue fighting each other, what do you think is going to happen? I always ask the question, you know, my wife now, for me, looking after her this morning, I've got up, done a breakfast, done lunch for her, so when I get home, she's, she's not struggling. But I, I find an honor, but it wasn't always like that. We, I made a choice, she made a choice that we're not going to fight each other. We made a choice. It's not one person because if it's just one, the other becomes a doormat. So we've got to both make that choice and sit down together and agree. We're going to close the doors in our home. We're going to close these doors. Our children cannot bring secular music into our house. Don't do it. We don't want secular music. I, I, right now, if you go in my house, you've got the Bible playing in one room, the Old Testament in one room. It goes around in the other room. You have another Bible playing or downstairs we have worship playing. There's always some kind of worship. We don't bring newspapers into our house. Every newspaper has what? Astrology chart. You, you, you believe in astrology? Some of you don't. You tell me how, 12 signs, you know what my sign would be if I believed in that? And you tell me why on earth I'd want to believe in that? Because 1 Samuel 25, 25 says, as a man's name is, you know what mine would be? Cancer. Why on earth would I want to declare cancer over my life? And 12 signs, you telling me 12 signs is going to govern the lives of 8 billion people? And it's so easy. If, I, if I'm writing astrology, I'll do it for Nigeria. And I said to me, today you're going to meet someone with the name beginning with O. <laughs> and make a fortune. But all these things open doors in your life. You've got to be careful what you do, what you watch. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. Let me go there with you. I'll cover this bit so you know that it's no, no joke. And staying away from church because you think the word's going to be, be preached to convict you, you, that's even worse because you know what? When you hear it, you repent of it immediately. Can you say amen? You just say, Lord, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. I'm going to do something in a minute. I'll show you what, I, what I'm talking about. In uh, Proverbs 28 verse 13, it says this. He that covers his sins, what does that mean? What does that mean when someone covers their sins? Not just hiding it, you refuse to repent. That means then you're sinning willfully. Because how many, we all make mistakes. I said we all make mistakes. But what do we do? We repent. Okay? He says, he that covers his sins shall not prosper. That explains why some people are in poverty, Right? But whosoever confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. So what do you have to do? You confess and you... So I'm going this way. I found out. I confess it. I'm on the wrong path. I repent of it. I do an about turn. I don't go back towards it. I, I walk. I confess it. I forsake it. And I walk away from it. Some of you need to cut the, the, the associations you have in your life. Some of you need to get rid of the numbers in your phone because association plays a major role in your destiny. Are you here? So Psalms 101, 
verse 2 and 3. Psalms 101. Verse 3, he says, I will set no wicked or evil thing before my eyes. He says, verse 3 says, well, let me go from verse 1. I'll sing of mercy and judgment unto you, O Lord, I will sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Is that a good word? I'll behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I'll walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked, no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It will not cleave to me. So our eyes and our ears are the gateway to our heart. So tell me, this is, tells me the major thing is what I see is really important. What I fix my eyes upon is a major thing. When you look at the wrong things, pornography is addictive. Anyone can verify? Some of you like. Did you know years ago, women were, it was men addicted to pornography. Today, women, there are more women today addicted to pornography than men. And that's strange. Women are watching pornography. Years ago, women be like, oh my God, no, no, that's disgusting. And that's, oh, 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 ah. Because now a door has been opened into your life. And how, how does it begin? When I started smoking, I did not smoke straight off the bat. What it did, I had one. I just said, no, I didn't want it. I went, <laughs> they said, no, no, you got to <laughs> inhale it. Everything in my body said no. Everything, my whole body, I went dizzy. Everything in me said no. I was 14 years old. Then I continued on. And this is where when you do something wrong, your body will tell you, no, don't do it. When you watch something, your heart, the Holy Spirit in you will convict you that this is wrong. And when, when I kept smoking, I wasn't born again, I wasn't a Christian, but I continued. And for two years, I never bought one single cigarette. This is the way the devil does it. He brings into your life free of charge whilst you get addicted. When I, was, when I was 16, I went to a party. I drank a tumble of alcohol, rum, vodka, whiskey, gin, every drink you can imagine. I drank it as, as, a, as a cold drink. I drank it straight. I woke up 30 hours later in somebody's house, not knowing where I was, what was going on in my life. That delivered me from alcohol. I don't like alcohol. I, you know, the rum, I don't, whiskey smells like vomit if I smell whiskey. I just, I just can't stand that stuff. I don't mind a little wine, some, not even wine. I don't like wine because that is, it, it, I don't know why people, people like wine. It's always bitter. It don't, don't taste right. That's how it tastes to me. How's it taste to you? <laughs> but I'm, I don't mind a, a, a glass of a sweet wine, but this, this, oh, this Chardonnay and the, all these different wines, I, I, it burns my heart if I have it. It gives me indigestion. So I, I believe God has placed that in me for a reason. But it, listen, I could have gone back and done it again. If I did it again, I would soon become an alcoholic. How many alcoholic doesn't become an alcoholic in a day? It's social drinking. And after a while, I went, to, I went to the pub. I don't like pubs. I went to the pub with some, some guys I worked with, and they all buying me drink, and they said, what do you want to drink? Oh, I have a half of a shandy, please, half a shandy. And I have a shandy. I sip it all night and sip the shandy. And then one week, up about four or five weeks later, they said, you're round. I said, we have to have rounds. <laughs> and they had, they had a a pint of beer, a double shot of whiskey. I was earning 90 something pound a week. The drinks cost me 30 pound. I got delivered from the pub there and then, never been back again, except it's a, they do food. So you gotta be careful. These things come upon you slowly. When you watch something, remember this, we adapt to things very easily. When you watch something, after a while, if you watch it, it becomes more and more. When I smoked, I smoked and it, it burned my throat. After a while, it wasn't strong enough to burn my throat. I had to take the butt off to get the raw nicotine to get the burn again. 
When you watch something, you're, you get acclimatized to it, and after a while, it's not enough. You need more, and you need more, and you need more, and you need more. <clears throat> this is where you're in addiction, and if you're not careful, you can become demon-possessed. I mean, there's a spirit of alcoholism. There's a spirit of lust. There's a spirit of pornography. There's a spirit of perversion. The, all these things are looking for houses, like I read to you in Luke 11, they're looking for houses to live in so they can manifest their perversion. Are you here? You see, sometimes, yesterday I was walking, I was driving, I was walking somewhere, and I heard this, uh, yeah, I went, no, I went somewhere, and I heard this, yeah, I went to the bank in Watford, and I'm walking, and I just hear this man shouting and screaming, and I look back, and it's, it looks like a Muslim guy, and he's, he's screaming, but no one could see who he's talking to. You can't see it, but he probably can. Something has happened in his life. How many, there's a spirit of murder. There's many kinds of spirits. And if you're not careful, all these spirits are looking for a house to dwell in. And if you open the door, they can come in. The woman I delivered was, was a born-again Christian who turned away from Christ. And you say, how do I turn away, turn away from Christ? He talks about, in Revelation, leaving your first love. When you leave your first love, you're open then to other things. If you're not under the umbrella, so like so many people who've left this church were married and now they're divorced. Simply because there's an umbrella over this house. And when you're, when you're under God's umbrella and you're doing God's will, the devil cannot access you. When you're not doing the things that he's tempting you to do, then what you're going to do, I remember one time, you remember a program called Dallas? That's, we, we watched Bobby Ewing come home, have a sip of drink. So th what did we do? We went out, we bought a, a, a drinks bar. We couldn't pay our bills, we bought, bought a drinks bar. And, you know, it looked good. And, you know, it's like you have a little sip of something, but it, it's never the same. You, you don't want to do it. And then I, I says, you know what? I think we're going to become alcoholics if we keep this up. I took all the drinks, all of them downstairs, and threw them all in the bin and got rid of it. No more Dallas. No. What was that? I watched the wrong thing. They made drinking alcohol look like a, a high-level kind of thing in your life. You've got to be a special person to come home and have a sip of a wine or, or what they call it, a whiskey with their, their ice in it, and they're walking around. Like, if you don't do it, you're not, you're not part of the, the team. Do, do you get what I mean? And we, we watched that and we started stock. We don't drink, but we stocked up our drink bar with, with Malibu and all these different drinks. And we don't drink, but we look at say, we're going to become alcoholics if we keep this thing. And we weren't saved. Some of you got your drink under your bed and you're born again. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> so, so things you watch, things you listen to, listen, these are gateways to in here. These are gateways to in here. And then out of, when, you, when they come in here and here, then out of this bit come forth what's gone in. You get it? So you've got to be so careful what you watch. Mark chapter 4, verse chapter, Mark 4, 23. Jesus said this. Mark 4, 23. He says this, if any man have ears to hear, how many have ears? How many have ears? If, if, I, had, if I had the time, I'll come and just pair of scissors and slice off your ears so you can say you don't have none. <laughs> how many have ears? Thank you. We have ears. Now, how many know he says, if you have ears, so we all have ears. So it's not physical ears. We all have ears. But it's your ears, is your ears attentive to hear? He that have ears to hear, let him hear. Because you could talk, as you could speak, everyone has ears, but not everyone listens. Right, you listen to me now. Let him that have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto him, take heed, be careful what you listen to. Be careful who you listen to. Because words have power. Words, if I said to you today, why do you look the way you look? You look like a dog. 
Now, I'm not saying it to anybody, somewhere that word will have an impact on your life. It, most of us are still living in what people said to us or called us. We have to know who we are in Christ Jesus and not allow people's words or opinions to shape our lives. He says, be careful what you listen to and be careful who you listen to. I'll tell you this now. It is more important today than ever because there's so many voices coming at us. There's so many voices. I, you know, I, 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 I watched some things on YouTube and as soon as I heard the foot, I'd switch it off. It's not necessarily swearing. Some of it is seduction. Some of it is enticement. Some of it is to make you feel less than you are. Some of it is to cause you to, to be discontented with who God said you are. There's so many things where preachers, I saw a preacher the other day, his father was, was a great man. His father passed away just a few weeks ago, and his father's been doing this for so long. He's gone totally opposite to his dad. He's saying, not all the scriptures in the Bible are true. Now, there's people clapping him, and he's saying, the Bible is not always accurate. This is supposed to be a preacher. How are you listening to that? Guess what? It's going to get into you. When you get these preachers who've been preaching for so many years, and one of them says, after 38 years, I realize tithing is under the law. You've lost your mind, preacher. If you take 38 years to hear from God, how do I know it's not going to take you another 38 years to realize you didn't hear from God again? And so many people now have stopped tithing because this preacher who is changed from the gospel to the hyper grace where everyone believes, they believe everyone's saved, whether you're Muslim, Hindu, or Jewish, whatever, wherever you are, you don't need to be born again. God's already forgiven you of all your sins. The truth is, your sins are already paid for, but you've got to receive it. And when you receive it, it's not just say, Jesus, come into my heart. He says, you've got to lay down your life. You've got to take up your cross. You've got to deny yourself. You've got to follow me. Be your bought with the price. You belong to me. Your choices are to, to be free is within Christ, but you belong to me. You don't go where you want, where you want, who you want, marry who you want, or live where you want. You acknowledge me in all your ways, and I will direct your path. That is what born again means. But now they're telling people that, you know, oh, God's forgiven you, and, and you know, we can, we, God is love, and the, the, the LGBTQ and all the different ones that are coming up now. Let me tell you that there's people challenging the belief system that you could teach my child whatever you want to teach my child. There are people challenging it now. There are groups coming up. They're going to schools and challenging the teachers and say, where did you get that from? You pushing, one guy says, you're telling, my, I've got a daughter and you're sending boys into the bathroom with my daughter. Have you lost your mind? He says, I'll take every single one of you down. You will not teach this to my children. He says, would you be happy for me to follow your daughter into the bathroom? I mean, boys are boys and girls are girls. Let me ask you, what is a woman? Somebody tell me, what is a woman? What is a woman? Anybody, what is a woman? Well, you're women, you don't know what you are. <laughs> what is a man? What is a man? What makes a man a man? <laughs> okay. Because the thing is, this question is asked publicly in meetings where these people gather. And the question is, could you tell me what a woman is? Is that a simple question? Is that simple? Can you tell me what a woman is? And, and if you're saying you're not a woman, you're a man, but well, what is a man? If you say you're a woman, because, you know, it's, it's the same. The, some born women want to be men, and some born men want to be women. But then tell me what is a man? Is that a simple question? What, what, what makes a man a man? What makes a woman a woman? I'm not going to answer it for you, but you sh this is questions you ask people when they come up to you and tell you to think like they think. We have, a, we have a system now where at this, if, you're not, if you're not strong enough, the system is telling me, I must believe what you say. Even though it goes against everything I believe or what God says. But I'm supposed to believe everything you say. But I believe in God, but I can't say nothing about God. 
You sack me, you dismiss me, you, you persecute me because I say Jesus Christ is Lord. But I must now confess what you want me to say when I know it's wrong. You, you get that? That's the world we're living in now. So we've got to get to the place where we know God. The people that do know their God shall be strong. That's knowing the word because he is the word. So in this, this whole system now, you'll be careful what you listen to because you've got pastors up there now having, there's one where they're having drag queens in the service. This, this is blasphemy. It's blasphemy. Where you, you now, and Christians are running to it. In Africa, you've got fake preachers doing all kinds of nonsense. They, they, they have a, a, one ministry called Breast and Honey Ministries. You, shall I tell you what Breast and Honey is? Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you've got the ones where they put their foot on a pregnant woman's stomach. You've got the ones where they send people out to eat grass. They've got them where they're drinking petrol and say it tastes like pineapple juice. Well, who on earth wants, is, how many pineapple juice is cheaper than petrol? They've got them where they're, they're swallowing snakes. Swallowing vermin. And the Christians, because they don't read this, and they're listening to the wrong voices. How do you get deceived like that? How do you get to a place a man can make you go and eat grass when you've got food in your house? Eating grass like an animal. Simply because you're listening to the wrong voice. When you hear the right voice, the right voice will line up with everything this says. His word is forever settled. His word, listen, all, all, all scripture has been given by inspiration of the Holy Ghost. The same Holy Ghost that has been in Genesis 1, before, during, and after. The same Holy Ghost that bears witness with us what is the truth. That's why he says, my sheep know my voice and will not follow another. If you don't know his voice, you're subject to deception. Because when, you, when somebody, someone comes along with this nonsense, you hear the voice of God in your heart. You, you may not hear audibly, but it rises up, error. When you know the voice of God, when someone says something, the scriptures come up in you. The first thing I see when I see all that stuff is many false prophets shall come. Many false prophets. They're full of false prophets in Africa, and they've got thousands of people following them. Thousands of people following them simply because they do not know the voice of God. When you know the voice, I, I, you know, most preachers would never tell you to get to know God for yourself. If you get to know God for yourself, it's hard to deceive you. It's very hard. When we came back from America, let me tell you, the, the church was predominantly African. Old, old style African. They did all the bowing and the scraping. For me, there's only one person we bow to. That's Jesus Christ. And I, there, it was all the, every, all the attire was African. Everything was African. And I set about changing that culture. Because I don't believe heaven only has Africans. And all the old ones left. Sometimes you've got to get rid of the old so the new can come in. The Bible says you cannot pour old wine into new wineskins. And their churches, they went to the ones that believe in that. I believe the gospel is for everybody. I believe every race should be able to come into the church, dwell together, fellowship together, listen to the word together. I don't care your age or your sex. I believe the gospel is for everybody. I believe next to you should be a different culture and it doesn't make any difference in your life. You cannot build a church on culture. It, it goes above God. It, you, when you build a church on culture, it says you make the word of God null and void. And you still got, I know many of you still got your culture. Come on, you know you got it. Let me see a wedding. You see, oh, eh. And you got the bada, you got the, oh, that's fine. As long as you don't bring it into church and try to convert people to it. You can have it. What, what is my culture? Anyone know what my culture is? My culture is the Jesus culture. Love everybody, bless people, take care of people. Amen. So now Mark 4 says, you should have ears to hear. The phone is the thing that goes in. The, the danger of the phone, it has a dual purpose. 
has dual weapons. It's a two-edged sword. It goes into the eyes and it goes into the ears. How much time, how much hours a week do you think you spend on the phone? It's easy. Give me a phone and we can pull it up. Does anyone want to show me your phone and we can pull up your, your, your time on your phone? Hmm? Why? What we love, we give to. What do we give? We give money and we give our time. What we love, we give to. If we give, we love God, we'll give our time, we'll give our money. When we did the feed the, uh, the, what, no, feed the home, not the feed the homeless, what is it called? The food bank. I think five, was it five or two people? Two people came out from this whole church. Two people came out to feed the ho- to someone hungry. Two people. What well, Jesus says, I was hungry and you fed me not. The, you'd have to buy the food. The food's here. All it needs is two hours of your time to come and bless someone and say, Jesus loves you. You said, but Pastor, I live so far. Let me ask you a question then. You live far. Can I ask this question? How far, what's the furthest someone lives here? Give me an area. Hmm? Milton Keynes, that's just up the road. Anyone? Kent? Kent? How far is Kent? Okay, so some people travel from Aylesbury, all over. Let me ask you a question. If I said to you next week, we've got a food bank here, um, I'm going to show be here. But whoever comes, just for your, just come in, we've got an envelope, Oman and Shola give you an envelope, there's 5,000 pounds for each person. How many think it's too far? Sorry? Please help me, please help me. Just humor me. How many would think you could make it? Liar, liar, liar. How many would make it? You tell me you'll not come out your house to get 5,000 pounds in cash. You'll come, you'll be here. If I said be here at 10, you'll be here sitting on the doorstep at 7. You know why? You know why? Because we love money more than we love God. I said we love money more than we love God. What you love, you'll give to. Your time and your money will be a measurement, a clear measurement of how much you love God. Can you say amen? So the phone is something that you have to be careful of. There are children that are getting demon-possessed over these phones. And when you bring them for deliverance, we will lock you in a room with them and leave you to do it yourself. We are not doing it for you. You put in place now restrictions that stop your children. Your children does not need to have a phone because their friend have a phone. We are not in competition. My children, well, they've all got phones now. But back in the day, I gave Danny a phone when she was young, but it didn't have all this internet on it. You know where the phones change? With the internet. It was the ones where when you text, you had to sit down and take time to text it because it's alphabetical order. It's, it's the, the flip phones, all those things. It's a different thing now. So listen to me, parents. If you give your children a phone, you got a 10-year-old, 9-year-old, 15-year-old, 16-year-old, those age are the most da- dangerous part. You know why? They're curious. And it's not just them. They have children around them giving them information. Yeah. Giving them information. Did you see this? Did you, do, you know, do you know what pornography is? Look at my phone. Ooh. And then they, they Google it as well. There's no, there's, no, there's no restrictions on all of that stuff. And if you are, are irresponsible enough to let your children, you may go into their room and see what's in their room. See what, you don't let a child go to bed with a phone. Are you mad? What do you think they're going to do all night? You can't get off of it. Well, what do you think they're going to get off of it? <sighs> I feel we could end here now, right? Now, let me give you another thing for, for families. There's another scripture. It talks about envy and strife. James chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. James chapter 4, verse James chapter 4. This is what a lot of people don't realize. This is why we don't have strife in this church. Anybody that calls strife in this church and take people out of the church, we do what God does. You know what that is? Hmm? You know what, he do? what did God do when Lucifer caused division? You put him out. Can, can Lucifer go back to heaven? 
Would, would God give him another chance? Anybody that, fit, that has the courage to divide the church has no idea who God is. Neither do they know the, the Bible. Because when you divide the church, the blood of the people is on your hands. Lucifer done it, and he was, he was cast out, not put out. He was cast out into heaven, out of heaven. So when people cause division, those people are dangerous people. Now listen to this in James chapter 3, verse 14. James 3, verse 14 says, James chapter 3, verse 14. But if you have bitter, if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descend not from above, but it's earthly, sensual, and devilish. Let me read it again to you. <clears throat> if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, in your hearts, not just in your home, because if it's your heart, it goes wherever you go. It says, glory not, lie not against the truth. Don't deny it. This wisdom does not come from God. It is earthly, sensual, and it's devilish. <clears throat> he goes on to say, where there's envy and strife, there's confusion and every evil work. What does that mean? Where there's envy and strife, there's confusion and every evil work. When you think of that, what, does, what comes to your, think, your thoughts? Where there's envy and strife, there's confusion and every evil work. Every evil work means the devil has access to every, every demonic force has access to you, to your home, to your heart. Because when you're carrying those things, he said, it's not from God, it's from the devil. So when you have envy, envy is a terrible spirit. Envy is, a, is this, the Greek word, I think it's sol solace. And what it means is someone who is so intense on being right, regardless of what the other people think. When you're envious of someone, what does that look like when you're envious? Listen, there's people come in here, they look good. Some just trying to cater up. When someone is born, Sarah was in school, and these black girls beat her up because of the color of her skin and the texture of her hair. Whatever you have, thank God for it. Even if it's your ball, thank God you still have a head on your shoulder. You, you, ch you chase it, you fight the girl. And you know the worst thing for, for me, I, I know why I was asleep, because it was in the alleyway outside my window, they did that. And before God, if I was not sleeping, I would not be here today because I would have took their lives. Because when you do things like that, you go after a child to be a child because the, the way they're born. Some of you, you're jealous of the way other people look. Why would you be jealous? Well, look in the mirror and see the way you are. That's an insecurity that you get jealous. You're opening a door to all kinds of nonsense in your life. Look in the mirror and whatever. Listen to me. What am I? What am I? Am I black? Am I white? What am I? What am I? When I look in the mirror, what am I? What would you, what would you call me? What, what, what race would you call me? Huh? I'm multicultural. I mix with everybody. I've, I flow with everybody. But people look at me. When, when I was walking with my wife, you know, we're teenagers and we're walking down the road, you know, we're holding hands and you're bop and you're bop and you're bop and you're, and, and you know, then you hear the black guys go, yeah, see that white man, well, the one the man, the white man have the one there. And like, what is wrong with you, you idiot? Love doesn't know color. Love, when you're in love, you're in love, not with the color, you're in love with the person. Love doesn't know culture. When you're in love, you're in love with a person, not with a culture. And when I married her, my, my parents told me, you don't marry Jamaicans. So why? Tell me why. Three hours. Why? 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 No reason. Why did you marry? My father's white. My mother's black. Why did you marry her? And you parents, listen to me. Every person has the right to choose their own partner. You have no right to tell them who they can and who they can't marry. Who are you? God, you, are you God? 
If, you bring, if, if your daughter is black as tar and she brings home a white gingerhead man, she says, mom, I'm in love, dad, I'm in love. You say, okay. First, is he a criminal? Is he, is he, is he going to do anything wrong? Is he an abuser? No, he, he's born again, he loves God. Congratulations. Some of you are like, really? Yes, really. <laughs> I've got one married Australian, one married a Jamaican, one married a Nigerian. I don't get involved. And a, yeah, I've got a Trini as well, Trinidad. There you go. The Trini, the Trini is alive. What, what does that mean? What, what's that got to do with me? Or as long as they give me the right grandchildren? If, if they say they don't want children, I say don't get married. But give me grandchildren. I'll, I'll accept everybody. <laughs> Amen. Unforgiveness. This is something so... Unforgiveness, let me tell you, it will destroy your life. I don't understand how people can have unforgiveness in their heart. I don't get it. I, I, I was born... Before I was born again, I had a lot of that anger and unforgiveness. I had it, but God told me, he showed me to deal with it. So now... You, I forgive everybody before you do anything. I, I don't have it in my heart. I don't have anything against anybody. When you have unforgiveness in your heart, you open your door, your heart to so much strife and pain and demonic forces. Because when you have unforgiveness, Matthew, Mark 11, 25 and 26 says, and when you stand praying, if you have aught against any, forgive them. Why? That your Father which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. For if you do not forgive, you cannot be forgiven. If you do not forgive, you cannot be forgiven. If you do not forgive, you cannot be forgiven. If you do not forgive, you cannot be forgiven. We look at Matthew 18 when that man begged. He owed 10,000 times. He begged the master. He begged the Lord, please have mercy on me. He says, I'm going to sell your family. I'm going to sell your children to pay your debt. He says, please have mercy on me. He, he says, okay, I'll forgive you. The man went out immediately, got hold of his brother who owed him 100 pennies. 10,000 has been forgiven. He, owed, he took someone who owed him 100 pennies. The man begged him the same way he begged. He put him in prison. He locked him in prison. Someone went back and told the Lord what he'd done. The Lord called him back and he said to him, you wicked servant. You're a wicked person. He says, you'll be cast into outer darkness until you can pay the debt. Where is outer darkness? It is hell itself. How can we be forgiven so much and yet we fail to forgive our brothers and sisters for the little things they do in our lives? How can a husband not forgive his wife? How can a wife not forgive your husband? You're supposed to be best friends. Huh? Now, forgiveness doesn't mean, come, let's go to dinner. Because some people, they get wiser and they'll come back and hurt you even more. You got to know when you forgive, and now don't say, don't say, a pastor told me I must forgive you, but we divorce. No, 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 no. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you forgive someone, let it be without an agenda. Some of you say, well, I, I, they don't, pass, they don't look, they don't look like they're sorry. Do you look sorry when you repent? Huh? When was the last time you repented? Give me a hand, anybody. Last time you repented? This morning, right? How many waited for God to give an answer? Huh? How many waited for God and said, Lord, have I been forgiven? Lord, do I look sorry? Did you look sorry when you repented? You didn't look in the mirror. You, all you did was say, Lord, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I, I, I ask your forgiveness. Please forgive me. I said I, I've done whatever. I, I thank you in Jesus. Name. You got up and you went. Why is it we can't be the same with each other? Forgiveness means, it doesn't mean we're best friends. What it means in here, I've got nothing towards you. I know you, we're not going to fellowship together. We're not going to go anywhere together. You're not coming to my house for dinner. We ain't going to do that. But you know what? When I see you, hi, how are you? God bless you. I'm, I'm not going to be, we're not going to be best friends. That's not what he says. But in my heart, I must have nothing against you. Forgiveness will open doors in your life that will destroy your life. So you've got to get to this place where you make this decision that, Lord, I repent of anything, forgive anybody. Do it right now. You will, you've got to let go of what there is. Whatever someone's done to you. And listen to me, some of you holding unforgiveness towards your parents. How can you have unforgiveness towards your parents? You know what I learned about my parents? They did what they were taught to do. I made a decision to change the way they did what they did. And I raised my family a different way. Now, 
when they, whatever struggles they met, I don't know what struggles they had. They didn't discuss it, but I know back in the day, the struggles. I remember when I came home from school and I fell over and playing football and I, I put a hole in, my, in my, my trousers and my mother beat me. And I think, why would you beat me? Because I fell over. I fell over. But then when I think about it now, they had to buy a new pair of trousers. It's a cost of a new pair of trousers when that could have probably bought food. Do you, do you understand? So when your parents, however they treated you, don't judge them like that. Because many of them struggled. Back in the day, it was not just like we have now. There was, I used to go shopping with my mother and bring the, two, the shopping home in two bags. Most of you now, you need a car to load your food in. They struggled. And so when they, when, you, when they treat you the way they treated you, don't be angry with them. Just look back and think about how was it? In the 60s, they couldn't even find somewhere to live. They'd have vacancies in the window. And when a black person goes, they said, no, the room's gone. Because of the color of your skin. And so they struggled. Many of them had to share rooms in houses with different people just so they could get by. So I'm saying to you, don't look back at what they did. Ask yourself, I wonder why they lived the way they did. And first thing you do is say, Lord, I forgive my parents. My grandmother, my grandmother used to beat us, used to send for the, the you had to go and cut this branch off the tree. <clears throat> you, you had to get this branch and she'd take, she, she, if you bring it too thin and you had to peel the bark off, I don't know why. You peel the bark off, she beat with a stick. And when you bought it too thin, because I mean, if you're going to get beaten, you don't pick the biggest stick. You pick the tiniest stick, one that you could crack with just, uh, and then she beat you with that, and then you get a bigger one. And until you got the one right size, then she'll beat you. And I saw that woman, her name was Lucy James. And I went back to St. Vincent for her and the girl that broke my ribs. I went for both of them. When I walked up to the house, I saw Lucy James probably in her 80s with a big black pot between her legs sitting on the, on the stairs eating out of the pot. My heart just melted. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do what I, what I thought I was going to do. She was just a sorry old woman that probably struggled in her life, so she did the same to us. I walked away from her. Then the woman who beat me up for years, I carried unforgiveness. Many, many years. I plotted her death. I went, when I, my father saying he's going to St. Vincent, I went specifically to take her life. She broke my ribs. I was in bed for three months where she beat me up so badly at five years old. I carried that for years. I went back there and I said, first thing I asked my brother, Frankie, the girl that broke my ribs, where, where does she live? He says, oh, she's gone to Canada. And I, I went, came back here. I saved up my money and I was going to go to Canada. I got all my paperwork done. I got everything done. I'm going to Canada to look for this girl. When you have anger in your heart and vengeance in your heart, it opens you up to all kinds of stuff. Thank God, I, I, when, when they told me the, how cold it was in Canada, that you, you, have, you can't let expose it, you can't, you, can't, you can't expose any skin. Um, you, you, could get, you have to cover all your skin. It goes minus 20, minus 40. And we had a little snow here, and I said, no, I'll leave it for now. Then I got saved. But let me tell you, it's, 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 I've got to tell you, that thing tormented me for so many years. I didn't know about forgiveness. I didn't know... We had nobody to teach us. When my wife and I, we would fight all the years we were married. We fought so many times. We had no teaching on marriage. We had no teaching. We had to learn by experience. There's no voice speaking into our lives. You have us every week telling you how to do it. What, we, what, we, what took us 48 years, you could do in two years if you apply what we tell you. We pass on knowledge. And if you, I'm telling you today, if you have unforgiveness or bitterness in your heart, you open doors in your life, anger, bitterness, resentment, all kinds of stuff comes into your heart. You need to get rid of it. It's, and forgiveness is not, a, it's not a, an emotion. It's a choice. You say, Lord, I forgive them and begin to pray for them. You start praying that God will bless them, God will give them favor. I pray for them. There's people who try to destroy my life, try to destroy this church. I pray for them. I say, Lord, hold nothing against them. Bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. Give them wisdom, give them knowledge, give them understanding. And when God bless them, I'm happy for them. I've got nothing towards anybody. You need to be able to say that as well, that I have nothing towards anybody. And don't just say it. You have to check your heart and make sure there's nothing in your heart towards any person. Because if you do hold those things, in your heart, it will not be good for you. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven with unforgiveness or bitterness or resentment in your heart. 
Are you listening to me? Husbands and wives, you're the worst ones. You argue and you never put it right. You fight, but you never put it right. You have this silent thing and we get back together, but we never addressed what was done. We never addressed what was said. We never repented of our wrongs. And what you're doing, you push it under the carpet, but God can still see it. <clears throat> you may push it under the rug, but God still sees it. You have to get to the place where you cleanse your heart, purify your heart. You say, you, first of all, you go to them and you say, forgive me. It's humility that says, forgive me. As it's humility that says, forgive me. There's a gentleman here, uh, Sia's husband, where are you? Femi, Femi, where are you? Come here, Femi. See, this man here, I looked at him this morning and I thought, what a blessing this man is. He, he, he's such a blessing. But see, I, I, see I, I judged him. I judged him when I never even met him. And I apologize to you, Femi, because I judged you. I said you only wanted to come here for immigration, for papers. I, I, that's what happens so much time. But I put everything together. I apologize to you. Please forgive me. I, I, you, I was wrong. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. I was wrong. I have no problems. You're an amazing guy. You've got an amazing future. I love your heart. I love your spirit. You're, you're a good man. Sia, you've done really well. Amen. Thank you, Femi. Thank you. It's so simple, right? I, I saw it this morning. I was going to do it in the service, but I thought, let me wait and I'll do it. What, what, what did that cost me? I've just won a friend. Huh? And now this is one I can keep in my life. This one is not harm. He's done nothing to me. It was just me after dealing with so many people over the years and watched women marry men just to get immigration. And then I put him in the same cart as them. But looking at him now, his heart is good. And I don't mind telling him I was wrong and I apologize for it. Do you get that? Do you get that? You have to learn to do the same thing. What did I just do? I just purified my heart. I, I've, got, I've gotten, it's not unforgiveness, but I judged him. I have nothing against him. When he played that sax today, I said, oh man, I feel like a blanket coming over me. Uh, it's just, it's just come, come up here with me for, for me and come stand here with that sax next to me. I just felt like a blanket coming over me. It's just come, bring it with you, bring it with you. I just felt like a blanket come over me. I said, oh, I'm on was excited. We're all excited. This man has got talents, amen. So again, we have to get to this thing, uh, open doors to occultism. There's so many people, Christians, uh, involved. Listen, let me tell you, there's witchcraft in the church. Just play gentle for me, and then uh, when we're ready, we'll go high. I'll tell you when to go high. <laughs> I'm going to sing a song. But witchcraft is in the church. Witchcraft is in the pulpit. The preachers in the pulpit who are practicing witchcraft. I, I listened to one preacher, and I, I wanted to see what he thought. He said he, he was a pastor, and what he did, he says... He went to this occultism where you could make money. And they put him in some hot water, but it wasn't hot when he got, it, it, he, it was, whatever it was, it was witchcraft. And when he came out, they told him, you have to make a sacrifice and bury the, the animal in the church. And worms will come out. And he says, after that, people just came from everywhere. So don't be impressed with a large church. And he says, after that, he went back to God. You do not go back to God after knowing God and crossing over to the dark side. You cannot go back to God. But people flood, flood the church. In Africa right now, black churches are packed with people, thousands upon thousands, and most of them are not even born again. They worship the man rather than the creator. And if you're not careful, occultism comes into your life be careful of association. Proverbs 13, 20 tells us, Proverbs 13, 20, he that walks with wise men shall be, he that keeps the company of fools will be association. Do you know how many people are in prison today because of the people they kept company with? Do you know how many people are divorced today because of the company they kept? There's so many people looking to destroy your life. The devil use whoever. Occultism comes in. The demonic forces will come in. I remember I had a, a conductor, a conductress, and she says, she's sitting in a room, and the gas fire, you know the ones where you light the gas, the flame? And she says, that went out. Now, those can't go out unless you turn it off. 
the, it went out, the gas was still coming out. And she says, the bin next to her filled up with green slime. And I said, so you did run from the room, right? I says, I'll come and pray over your room for you. She says, no, 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 no. She says, I've joined another group who does the same thing. She became demon possessed. When you get involved with people, let me tell you, if they do not love God, if he's not their priority, if they're not serving God, I'm not talking about attending church, I'm talking about passion about God. There, there's some people, you don't have to tell, be in church on Sunday, they are here. They are here. You don't have to tell them, come to prayer meeting, they are there. We've got Carmen right now. Carmen is in South Africa. Carmen is in South Africa. She's up for every midnight prayer. Do you know what time is in South Africa that time? One o'clock? She's, we've got people in Kenya who are three hours ahead of us. Australia, how many people are up doing Bible school? What is our excuse? Most of you don't even come on to prayer meeting. It's here. And you know what? Familiarity is a terrible thing. It breeds contempt. When you become familiar with God, over familiar and familiar with God, you begin to take God for granted. You take his blessings for granted. You take his favor for granted. You take your salvation for granted, not realizing that people will give their lives for what you have. How do we get to the place? Familiarity. You've got to get past that place of familiarity where you begin to say, God, I need you all my life. He says in verse Deuteronomy 18, let me give it to you, Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. Says this. I said this to a lot of, I spoke at a, a, a West Indian church and I said to most of you, <clears throat> has left Jesus at the airport. When you got to London, however you got here, boat, whatever, you left Jesus at the airport. Listen to what it says. Verse 9, Deuteronomy 18, verse 9 said, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, we're in the UK. How many remember where you came from? No, seriously, how many remember where you came from? Some of you are born here. But how many remember having the wood the fire outside on stones cooking on the stones outside how many remember that uh, how many remember the oval, we didn't have cups we had oval teen tins where you sew the hand you, they, they put a handle on the cup take the label off and have a tin cup where you drank your tea from how many remember bush tea <laughs> you remember bush tea so you're like bush tea I'm not talking about ganja I'm talking about bush tea <laughs> not, not ganja tea no <clears throat> was what he says when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. These nations have abominations. Today, they have abominations. There shall not be found among you any that makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that useth divination or an observer of the times or an enchanter or, or, or a witch. In St. Vincent, we had a book called, um, I forget the name of the book. It was it was illegal for the book to come in the country, but yet people go to the post office. We didn't drop it in the house. You had to go, and they'll pick up the book. And the first half of the book told you, if you serve God, you, you'll be poor. You'll never have anything. And the second half was sealed. And it's if you broke the seal, you've got to do what it says. And one of it, you had to sacrifice a member of your family to get money. And people did it. One guy took the head of his child, beheaded his child. And I think it's De Lawrence book, something like that. I don't know if they're still around now, but it's De Lawrence book. And people were killing their families. In Africa, you've got Christians, one pastor, one son, they made everybody in their church take off their outer garments. That seems weird, right? He made the whole church take off the outer garments. And when, he, when they took off the, their clothing, underneath was all the talisman and all the, all the things they were wearing on their bodies from witchcraft. How, you can't serve God and serve the devil at the same time. It's one or the other. So you cannot mix with the, the occultism, you cannot open the witch, uh, astrology, palm reading, uh, divination, all those things. Yes, my, my sister went to one and they, told, they can tell you a past, they can't tell you a future. And when I went to her house, she says, she was in the shower, her husband was downstairs and she, she got into bed and she felt the bed covers come back Someone got in the bed and she looked and there was no one there. Something went home with her. 
I went to a house and I went straight to the kitchen. I knew exactly, when I walked in the door, I knew exactly where they were. They're in the kitchen in the cupboard hiding there. And I went in the cupboard, I said, get out. Don't come back here again. I cast them out. When they were, I was walking up the road, they were walking behind me angry. I mean, they could see in the spirit. They're walking angrily behind me. I turned back. I says, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. They, never, they went. When you, op- when you get involved in these things, you open doors in your life. When people come to your house, be careful who comes to your house. When they come to your house, they will leave something behind. I mean, all of us carry presents. I took my wife shopping in, in London and they said to me, every time, because I go by myself sometimes to get her gifts, and they said, every time you come in, we all said, something changes when you walk in the door. I mean, when you go somewhere, you carry a presence. Other people carry presence too. Music carries a presence. When you play music in your house or your thing you're playing, Believe me, it opens doors in your home. It gives demonic spirits authority to come into your home and to destroy your home. Be careful what you watch. Whatever you watch, you open the TV, is a doorway into your home and eventually into your heart and into your life. Be careful what you watch. If you watch pornography, if you're married, go to your wife and say, I'm addicted to pornography, please help me. If you're a woman and you're addicted to pornography, go to your husband and say, I'm addicted, whatever it is. If you're addicted to alcohol, take him and throw him away. If you, if you need to have it all the time, just throw it away. I've got wines in my house. Every, I, I gave someone a bottle of wine and I don't know what happened. Every time I give it away, I get more back. I, I, I get more back. I give it away. I, and I realize I'm actually activating the principle of seed time and harvest. So I stopped giving them away now because I've got, I've got so much wine, wine everywhere in my house. Every time someone sends me a hamper, then the, my, the dry cleans will bring me and everybody brings me wine. I'm not a drinker, but I kept giving it away. And the more I give it away, it's the principle of seed time and harvest. It kept coming back, kept coming back. So I stopped giving wine away. Be careful what doors you open in your life. Can you say amen? We're not trying to hurt you. We're trying to help you. Husband and wife, do not let the sun, you or you single as well, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Amen. Amen. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. You make sure you close every door. Amen. 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 I pray it helps you today. And listen, compromising with God's word is is not going to be good for you. It will not end well for you. Go, if you're going to go for God, give him 100%. Don't, don't give him 80. Don't give him 90. It's either all or nothing. God does not want half of your life. He wants all of your life. When you, uh, couples, when you give your lives to Christ together and you make a decision, you know what? Let's do it not, not your way, not my way. Let's do it God's way. How does God tell us? Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. How does that, what does that look like? What does it look like when the husband loves the, the wife? How does that look? How, do, how does God love you? Let me ask you, when's the last time God shouted at you? Hmm? Anytime? When's the last time you felt a slap in your sleep? God hits you. What, what should a woman do if the man hits you? There's a movie. There's a movie. There's a movie. I want you to go and watch a movie. It's by, what's that, that lady that sings? Jennifer Lopez. Uh, Enough. The movie's called Enough. And I'd advise you, watch that. Do what she did. When he comes in, the lights are off. And it's between you and him then. How many bullies need to be faced? When a, when a bully, I've had bullies all the time. When you go after the bully, um, we were at Kensington Town Hall doing a conference. And there's seven white guys out there. And every time people came out, they said, you sinner, you stinking, dirty sinner. You filthy, dirty singer, sinner. And I went out there, me and some of the guys went out. I went for the biggest one. I said, hey, yellow belly. I says, what's that big yellow streak down your, your back? I said, tell me what you tell them. Come on, tell me. Tell me what you say to me. And he's, they all went quiet. I said, tell me. Come on, yellow. The streak, I can see the streak down your back. You're yellow. Tell me what you said to them. I said, come on, big boy. Tell me what you said. And he wouldn't say a word. The night he came in, we were in a conference. He walked in with a microphone. He says, I'm going to sue you for threatening my life. I took him and the microphone, not a word. Give him, what's that when they call it? When they pull your pants up? A wedgie. Give him a wedgie and introduce him to the pavement. You face bullies. You do not play games with bullies. Now, don't, don't look at me and judge me now. That's, I was an usher. That's, you, you know. 
<laughs> I'm on that shoulder. <laughs> I'm on that shoulder. <laughs> I will do that now. I'm on the the ones that are doing that, that part now. If you, <laughs> please don't tell anyone about uh, what, what they do, but that's what it is. So how do I close the doors? Let me give you the examples now, what to do. You've got to close the doors in your life. First John 1 verse 9 and 10 says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now, repenting of your sins is not just I'm sorry. Repenting means doing about turn and walk away from it. If you're in a relationship that's causing you to sin, and there are people, there's got to be someone in here that's committing fornication, right? Would you agree? I guarantee it. If there's someone in here right now, you're committing fornication. He says, if you're faithful and just, if you, you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You do an about turn. That means I do not go back again and do that thing again. So you've got to, repentance will close the door in your life. Repentance will close that door. James 4 verse 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. When that thing comes into your life, resist it. Tell someone, talk to someone. The Bible says we should confess our faults one to another. That does, you've got to be very careful when you do that because it's not everyone you could tell your faults. But, you know, I, I was, I was the, the, the lady that broke my ribs it had such an impact on me. I was angry at the world. It was no longer her. It's everybody I was angry at. And I, was, I finished preaching one time, driving up Finchley Road. I had an M3 BMW then, and uh, this guy went through the red lights and I, I blew him because it's danger and he put his fingers up at me. I started driving to chase him down the road and I just finished preaching and the girls in the car, they said, dad, don't do it, dad, don't do it. Dad. And I'm like, be quiet, be quiet. And I'm chasing him and the dad, don't do it. And they said, dad, suppose it's a member of the church. And the light came on. I went back to the church and said, listen guys, I just want you to know, I have an anger problem. I'm gonna deal with it. And I, I dealt with it. Because when it's a secret, you're always bound. When it's no longer a secret, the devil has no power. I said, it's a whole church. I have, a, I have a, an anger problem, and I'm going to deal with it. Suddenly, it does, and now I'm driving on the road. I let everybody out, and I'm not, I, I'm not angry anymore. I just let everybody. My wife says, you drive like Miss Daisy sometimes, because it's just, I'm, not, I'm at peace. So whatever you're doing, find your wife or husband or somebody you could talk to. Don't tell me, because then you're going to tell me. You're preaching about me. I preach, and I don't. So confess it's someone else that can help you. Amen. You've got Elisha, you've got Sarah, you've got Sam, you've got Amon, you've got Shola, you've got Seth, you've got Beatrice, or Moses, you've got all these people. You can confess it all and they will not tell anybody. Amen. Just tell, if, just tell them, they'll help you carry it through. Amen. Stand to your feet with me. <laughs> oh, God is a good God. God is a good God. I want you to lift your hands. This man is going to play a song, and it's going to be a song of deliverance. Now, I'm not saying a word. I'm just telling you now. If you receive this, this song is going to set you free. As this music comes, remember when um, King David played the harp? The anointing on that harp caused the evil spirits to depart. Close your eyes.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you bow ahead with me for a moment? I want to make sure every person before you leave this building online, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, I'd like to pray a prayer with you that changed my life and so many lives who I've encountered. I prayed a simple prayer that invited Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to be my Lord, to be my Savior, to forgive me my sins. That prayer changed my life. It changed my destiny. It changed everything in my life. It changed my circumstances. It changed my direction. He took me up, picked me up. He cleansed me. And he put my feet on solid ground. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I'd like to pray that same prayer with you today. We don't embarrass you. That's not what we do. But we want to introduce you to the King of glory, the one that has the power to transform your life. If that's you today, you say, yes, yeah, please pray with me. I'd like my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'd like every sin forgiven. Would you raise your hand and I'll pray with you where you stand. Raise it high so I can see it. Ashes, help me. God bless you. I see your hand. I see your hand. God bless you. I see your hand. God bless you. I see it. I see your hand there. God bless you. I see your hand there. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. God bl- I see that hand. Yep. I see that hand. Yes. God bless you. I see that. Today's your day. Today's your day. There's such an anointing on this, this music here today. I see a hand at the back. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Would you pray this prayer with me now? Would you bow your heads with me and pray this prayer with me? Say with me, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I repent of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior from this day forward in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to do something I've never done before. I, I, if you want, if you can, we want to give you a Bible. I want this man to come over, Femi. I want to leave where he is and come over here. I want you to come in the front. I want him to play a song over you. You, you may not understand this. There's so much power in music. If you will come forward, just stand here. No one's going to embarrass you. You don't have to say anything. Just come. Come from where you are. We're just going to play this song now. He's going to sing something over you. He's going to play a song over you and see what's going to happen. Don't be, don't be embarrassed. Don't worry about people. This is between you and God. Come, 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 come. Come forward. Oh, you need this? Come forward. Bring me, help me bring forward. Can we sing? Can we go close? Just the mic, just the mic. Lift your hands.
Amen. Amen.